What's up, guys? All right, so today I'm working on No Manners, uh, waiting on Trey to get here with his car. Um, going to be changing the suspension out on his. Uh, with mine, I'm uh, making a couple of changes, nothing drastic. Uh, for starters, I ended up moving my coolant overflow um, to the trunk. Basically, want the water behind the tires. Um, so, you know, keep the antifreeze off the track, or keep the water off the track. Um, in this case, it, just water. So I ended up basically just running, um, this is an airline hose from my job. And basically um, all we did was cut the length of the hose. I ran it through the car. Uh, you come through the car, up under the dash, tucked it up under here under the weather stripping, and it goes straight back to the truck. So, you know, like I said, nothing drastic, just to kind of hide it out of the way. I'm a zip tie, the line hanging up somewhere. Um, also, while we're here, I am going to be uh, changing out this fitting on the wastegate since it came in and get that squared away so we can get our boost under control. Um, but stay tuned and uh, we're going to let the intro play and I'll see you guys in about a minute. So for starters, why am I moving the coolant overflow to the trunk of the car? Well, in drag racing, um, if something were to happen or say pop a head gasket or the car starts pushing coolant, whatever the case may be, for one, you should always have a diaper under the car or some type of catch pan or something um, for cases like that. Um, also, you don't particularly want uh, coolant in the motor to begin with if it's a dedicated track car. Um, you always want to run water um, as much as possible. So I understand, you know, some people might not have uh, a garage or a shop where they can keep the car inside, keep it from getting cool or freezing temperatures, etc. Um, in my case, I do. So removing the coolant overflow to the trunk. Um, that way I can get rid of this water bottle right here that I was using It lasted a little bit. It lasted a while um, But it's time for that to go time to make some changes and try to be a, a little bit more Professional a little bit more presentable. So, you know as I stated I moved the coolant overflow to the trunk nothing fancy is just the eBay uh, Coolant overflow I think it was I think they're like 20 or 30 dollars online something like that and uh, in this case, I didn't buy this one. Um, I got it from a buddy of mine, Anthony, that he wasn't using it and decided to just go ahead and put it on the car. I've had it for a while, um, probably a little over a year or something like that. Um, but you know, when I started to go big turbo, I didn't see this car getting to the point where it's at right now. Um, at the beginning, you know, I just wanted to have a 10 second car and ended up running a 10. Then after that, we got faster and then I realized, you know, that I could make some small changes to the car and potentially take the stock motor record. I did what I had to do and we took the record. So now that the car is basically three tenths away from uh, running a nine, um, now I'm gonna try to get the car to run a nine on the stock motor. I'm not going to say it's not possible. Um, it is very possible. It's never been done. Um, in my case, I don't care if this motor blows up or not. So we're going to give it a shot and see what happens. Um, do I think it can do it? 100% for sure. Um, it's going to take 
a really really good 60 foot it's going to take um basically the right tune up in the car uh to make that happen so that's my plan now that we got the record um uh, even if we push the car to you know 10 bottom 10 20s or 10 teens or something like that you know i'm cool with it if the motor pops by then i'm fine with it um i don't think anybody's gonna catch that uh, you gotta have a lot of seat time and you gotta know your car uh, but in this case uh we did that record with no boost control whatsoever um like the car was just blowing the tires off every gear um and with the boost leash you know it's time based so um at on the data log and i can show you the data log at data log at 1.6 seconds i think the car was at like 30 35 pounds of boost um and i'm gonna i'm gonna do that for you guys i'm gonna hook my battery up and we're gonna go through the log from the track all right so i'm in the car and like i said we're gonna go through the log i'm gonna show you the log from the last pass so let's see here all right so got your gate b is for boost t is for time so we're going to go from the time that i launched the car which is basically where it starts at so it's at zero seconds the car is on eight pounds as soon as i drop the e-brake because it's connected to the e-brake so my e-brake acts as a transit brake button um that way as soon as i release the e-brake it starts the time uh, so we're going to go to 1.6 seconds and there you see it at 1.6 seconds the car made 33 pounds of boost at 1.6 seconds from the time that i launched the car you're not getting anywhere with that much boost off the hit like that um just not ideal and then we keep going we keep going by the time we get to three seconds the car is already at 38 pounds and then if we go back at 3.1 seconds the car is at 41 pounds of boost so i wasn't lying you know in the last video about what the car made on that record pass and then we keep going it made 40 at 3.2 seconds 41 at four seconds into the run the car was basically still at 40 but 39 on the bleach and then we keep going and then after that it starts tapering off so yeah you're not getting anywhere like that um spinning like that off the line so you know like i said the 60 foot was trash the 330 wasn't terrible um it definitely could have been better um but it went you know 458 to 330 so that's that's not completely bad um but it it should have been a lot better so and then the eighth was 683 um blowing the tires off the only thing that helped this car go that fast was the fact that it just had a lot of mile an hour it had had enough mile an hour to run what it needed to run um how it held that boost i have no idea i couldn't tell you um but now you see for yourself you know every after every pass uh i basically look at the log on the leash and that tells me based off my time slip, you know, the changes that I need to make, or if I need to speed the rate up, slow the rate down, turn the boost down, turn the boost up. Um, and that's basically how we've been doing it. Uh, I don't really data log the car as far as looking at the tune to see if it was running rich or if it was running lean. Um, and the reason why is because uh, my tuner's the GOAT. You know, I trust him fully and I don't really have anything to worry about um, as far as trying to look and see you know if the car was lean or not so 
there was no point me for, for me to pull that up. Uh, the car's not tuned on Diablo, it's actually tuned on HP tuners. Um, I have the cable and all of that stuff to pull it up if I wanted to look at it, but like I said, there's no point because I trust my tuner. Uh, so there ain't nothing I need to check out there. All right, so now that you guys have seen that, it's time to take this wiper call off and try to get this push lock fitting swapped out. And by that time, I believe Trey should be pulling up and we'll get his suspension swapped over um, to try to help his car 60 foot better too. Um, so let's get this shit out. All right, so after dicking around with this fitting for a little bit, I don't even know what I did with it, to be honest with you. Oh, it's in my pocket. <clears throat> uh, so this one is the one that I took off and it looks fine, honestly, but for some reason it's just not locking. So even though I put the new one on the car or on the wastegate, um, it's doing the same thing fresh out the pack um not really sure why a brand new one would be doing the same thing um but it'll only lock if i put the like kind of push up on the lock to get it to stay in there um it's not supposed to do that so uh waste no time i went ahead and ordered a whole new pack of a different brand and we'll see how that works um but that right there is not going to cut it. So I guess we're waiting a little bit longer. Um, I was going to go to the track Tuesday, but um, Jarek got his car back. Well, getting his car back Monday. Um, so I'm going to wait until the 4th of June and we're going to take it back out there. Um, but I'm not going to take it back out there knowing... If I was to attempt to make another pass with that new fitting on there like that, it would still do the same thing. Um, the car would still make 47 pounds of deuce, and that's not what I'm trying to do. So, guess we're waiting on that to come back in a little aggravated uh, on that one, but it is what it is. Still got more stuff to do. Um, Trey just called. He said he should be here in about five minutes. Um, and then... We'll start tearing in on his, getting the suspension changed. He's got some issues with his. Um, I think somebody put the boat in backwards on the rear spindle and he can't get it out. So that sounds like it should be fun. Um, but let's we'll see what happens when he gets here. spirits back up so Trey came in and got a new fitting so this one actually works out well and I already tested it it was all good I don't know what is going on with these brass ones um I don't know they just aren't locking so uh I went ahead and ordered another pack like I said and probably just gonna keep those on standby. They'll definitely be at the track every time I go for sure, cause you never know what might happen. But uh, I'll get this changed out and um, get started. She's coming. It moved. Come and get me. Why that old school right there? <laughs> hey, motherfucker, if it work, it work. <laughs> that's, that's, that's that old scissor jack right there. <laughs> Alright. So, basically, what we're doing with his, uh, changing out the coilovers, like I said. Um, 
he ended up getting the same ones that I have because I'm cheap, but they work for what they are. And we're gonna swap those out, try to get the alignment straight in the rear because he's got a lot of camera going on. Um, and then I'm gonna set the preload for him. I'm basically gonna set his suspension up just like how my suspension is set up. So um, it's the same thing. And uh, we're not really worried about the front, but they are getting changed too. Um, but his car needs a little bit better suspension that's on there now um, than what's on there. So his car is uh, fully built, uh, built head, built bottom. Um, it needs a fuel system on there. Well, it's got one, but it needs a better one on there than what's on there now. Um, for him to make a little bit more power or maximize his setup. And right now, um, he doesn't really have a lot of track time. Um, he's been on the track a couple of times, but you know, he ran a couple of twelves here and there when before the car got turned up how it is now. Um, so it's enough for him to get used to it before it, you know, it goes on straight kill mode. Um, if you ask me, uh, the car has enough power. Well, it has enough potential to run like bottom tens. And, you know, we, like I said, I think his car has gone 1068 at 134, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, like I said, that's enough power for somebody to get used to before um, it gets turned up. So we're gonna see what happens with this suspension. All right, finally after some time spent, got the first one on. Uh, the old one was just ready to come out. It was just way too old. Like all rusted up, seized up didn't want to move the car was cambering for no reason so it's all out and the new one is in so once we get all four i'll uh pick the camera back up and um see how it sits all right so skipping on the ford uh i have one last thing to do and this charge pipe was made by Zach Melly, same guy that made my manifold. And basically, um, I still have like the stock, um, guess you could say couplers from off the stock one, um, but that's a Han attachment with the Grady Type S. And basically, um, in the last video that I posted, you know, the IAT came out, kept popping out. So I went ahead and upgraded and got the V2 version for modern to screw in. And uh, I've marked on here somewhere, right there. Oh, you can kind of see it right there. Um, I marked where I'm gonna drill the hole for the push lock fitting. Um, that attachment actually had the threads in it already um, for the push lock, luckily. So I need to get a 1130 seconds and uh, drill bit and drill the hole. Um, and then we're gonna put that in there and that'll be the last thing the car be ready to go back to the track. So um, I think what we're gonna do is just end it off here. And I think the next time I record a video, it's gonna be uh, when we're back to the track uh, with the car. Like I said, Jared will have his and I'm gonna make a couple passes. I think I'm gonna probably make a couple passes uh, alongside of him. Um, he's gonna be dialing his car in and I'm gonna be trying to dial mine in, try to get the front half right. Um, but as you see, we got the car back on the ground and there's no more camber. Everything's good. Um, now we just have to do the passenger side in the rear and we're gonna leave the fronts alone for right now. The front uh, needs to be changed, but we're gonna do those at a later date. Um, 
and then um, he, I believe he is going to be there too um, on the fourth when we go to the track, just so he can try to get some seat time. Um, and again, you know, like I said, this this one's fully built. Um, its best ET has been a 1068 at 134, and um, that one, of course, you already know, you know, it's the fastest stock motor neon in the world right now. So, um, but yeah, I'm gonna end it off here, and we're gonna pick it up when we get back to the track. So, you guys stay tuned. Uh, I'm gonna be trying my best to get you guys some more videos and uh whatever you don't like comment if you like it comment um don't forget to like share and subscribe and i will catch you guys on the next one peace